see that. Do what? I see that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are at the LZ Invitational. This is actually where they run Formula Drift. We're at Orlando Speed World. And we got my buddy Sean here from Precision Sport. And this is one of their latest builds. It's a E36. That's all I know about it. Looking from the outside, it looks kind of like OEM Plus. I'm guessing that's kind of what you guys were going with. I think OEM Plus is a good term. So it's a 97 coupe, was originally silver. We did a ground up restoration. Whole car's been restored, it's been painted. It's a special Porsche color, which we'll get to later. Uh, it also has an engine swap. Um, S54 to be exact. And this was a customer that loved the car when he was a kid, finally saved up enough to do it, and here it is. It's everything with a recommendation from me and my guys at the shop, and just basically built OEM, but better. Let's start from the outside. So essentially what you've done is made a brand new E36. What your vision of what it should have come from the factory. Yeah, I mean, most of it is factory, but the color was originally gonna be Dakar, which was a, the factory color for E36. Customer ended up changing it to Golf Blue, which is the Porsche Golf color from the 70s, I believe is where it started. He also wanted to go with a stock look, so it has the double spoke twos, which are a stock E36 M3 wheel that we restored and powder coated. It also has all new trim on the outside, all new rubbers. The whole car was taken apart, engine was taken out, it was painted from the ground up by Samuels. And is it pretty hard for you guys to get E36 materials now? I think uh, yes and no. I mean, I think some of the stuff is readily available, but other, other parts are not. Uh, some of the rubbers and stuff took a pretty long time to get. I think the dash and the interior, right, the black interior parts were like... Yeah, a lot of the black interior pieces are pretty much in LA anymore, so. Yeah, so we took some time finding those. eBay was our friend. I also had some of my stash and his stash that we we had to pilfer through to find it. Because this was originally a gray interior, so it had gray carpet, it had gray door cards, it had gray half dash. So he wanted to do the whole all black OE interior. Uh, we did a rear seat delete in it, just to kind of clean it up and make it kind of a club sport look of the car. Because uh, the customer, it's a street car. Um, he might take it to the track like two or three times a year. Uh, so we wanted to make it be mostly a street car with the ability to take it to the track and be safe and have fun. Got it, okay. Huh, all right, so then what else did you guys work on on the outside? So on the outside, it has the active auto work exhaust, which you'll see. And that's kind of like a period correct piece because they don't really make that, any, that exhaust anymore. And that was period for the cars. If you remember Active Auto Work, they used to make a lot of the turbo kits back in the OG days, like back in 95, 96, 97. The outside has all the new rubber trim, like I mentioned. It has all the new uh, plastic trim. Everything else is pretty much stock. It's a stock M3 kit on the outside. Uh, we went with the Euro headlights, the glass, glass front housings and everything to make that a little bit thing. That's always been a part of the E36 where I didn't like all the plastic, plastic headlights. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the outside. It looks great. So uh, can we take a look at the engine bay? Yeah, let's pop the hood. Yeah, so this is the S54, which normally finds its home in the E46 M3, which is the, you know, cars were made from 2001 to 2006. So it's a straight six, just like that was in the original cars, but instead of being S52, it's S54. And this is a full bolt-on car, so this probably makes about, what do you say, 340 to the wheels, I think? Around 330, 340 to the wheels, NA. It has the CSL airbox on it. It also has some headers from Active Auto Work, um, and it has some custom tuning that we did on the dyno. And then the motor's been gone through. It has main bearings, rod bearings that we did, main bearings we replaced. It has the S54 oil line upgrade. It also has the Venos. We did a hopeful Venos uh, valve adjustment also. So you guys took it down to bare metal? We did, yes. I mean, this is um, like a factory finish too. 
Yeah, so we, so I, I didn't want it to look like it was painted. I wanted it to look like it came like this from BMW. So I had the paint shop do the matte finish under here, which is uncleared paint, just like in the OE cars have. So it just kind of keeps that OEM look, you know, underneath the hood. Right, because if somebody didn't actually know any better, they would look at this and they'd be like, oh yeah, this is stock. Exactly. Huh. Yeah, exactly. That was the point of this build. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was a restoration project because the car was actually found on a farm and it was pushing tractors, I believe, is what he told us. They literally were driving by, they saw the car sitting, they went and snatched, snatched it up and then brought it in and we basically took it from there. Was so, it originally a U.S. car? It was originally a U.S. car. It was originally, had a, has a lot of, how many miles are on the car? I think like 130. About 130,000 miles are on the chassis. So we just took it from the ground up and went from there. On the inside, we went with the Recaro. The, the yeah, used let's to be take the, a look at the inside, if you could just go on that side. Yeah, they used to be the, uh, they're called the Speeds now, but I think they're the SRD, I think they changed to it, which is just a, a super, you know, it's just a super nice Recaro that I think looks OEM and matches the finish. Like this is a vinyl with like a, a nice, like cloth insert, which I think goes with the with the E36, you know, vinyl in the inside and kind of period correct for the 90s. So, how, how long did it take for you to do this? I mean, because I'm looking at this and it is, I mean, it's like a brand new E36. MP. Yeah, it's been a it's been a two year project. We've been working on it off and on. Really, it hasn't been a um, it's been a priority for us, but it's just it just takes long to find the parts and get everything the right way, what we wanted it to be. And then the only thing we put in that you can really see aftermarket in the dash is the is the Pioneer head unit, and that was because the customer has to get on the on the phone with his Bluetooth and get on calls. So we went ahead and put the Bluetooth piece in to kind of update, you know, the usability of the car. Sparco steering wheel is super cool. Um, yeah, I like the deep dish of it because it brings it to you. But, you know, to me, like I, I mentioned before, like the tactile pieces in the car, the seats, the steering wheel, the shift knob, you know, this is a little bit later knob. This is like an F10 M5 weighted knob, but I feel like that's the best offering BMW has uh, for the, you know, for the shifting feel and everything. And just, just kind of make it exactly the way I would want the car if it was mine. Yeah, the um, seats match really nice. Honestly, looking from the outside, you can't really tell it's too modified besides it being super lowered, right? Yeah. Really slammed. Yeah. What kind of suspension is it on? It's actually on BC. It's on BC Racing. Uh, that was something the customer wanted to go with, but um, I think what we're end up gonna end up doing is switching out for either a set of ASTs when he gets more into doing the track. But for street, like that was something that he wanted to do. He had it on the car when he brought it to us. It also has um, powder coated subframes. We put some camber arms on the car. It has all new bushings underneath. It has the, the roll bar, which we put in. We also have some harnesses, which we're gonna put in the car before we deliver it to them. So yeah, it's pretty much almost done and ready to go to the customer. It's about 99% right now. This is really cool too, the rear seat delete. Tell me about this. Yeah, so this was a, a culmination of a couple seat deletes that are on the market, but we kind of made it our own. Would you say, Adam, with the modifications that we made? Yeah, it's um, it took some doing, um, but everything, finally fit and finish the way that we wanted it to. Yeah, and another thing, Larry, if you'll notice, like another thing that I do in all my personal cars is I do the headliner and the A, B, and C pillar in Alcantara. So this is actual real Alcantara in anthracite that BMW puts in all their upscale models. We order the material from Italy and then I have a guy that wraps all the panels. And to me, it just makes the car feel so much nicer and just, and it's OE because it's that anthracite color that you find in all the newer BMWs. So it's just a small feature, a small touch that I think, you know, makes the car be a little bit nicer and just feel like a, a newer car. Huh. This is so cool. I love it. I love it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, the color we weren't sure about. I didn't love it when it came back from paint and the car was a part. I kept telling him like, I don't, I don't know about this color, but once, Every week we started putting the panels on, we started getting the wheels on, we started getting everything on. It really came together and I actually really like the color now. And when, when I drive this car, people just say, hey, I really like the color. They don't know the color. Then I went to a Porsche, we were at a Porsche event one morning, a Cars and Coffee. The guy's like, is that Gulf Blue or, or Mexico? And it was like a bet. So when you know, you know, if you don't, it's just another stock color. So that's kind of the fun of doing these projects. Hmm. Cool. Well. Can't drive it today, but uh, 
Should we drive it today? I mean, we could. We might not be able to get back in. That's the yeah. problem. We'll drive it Monday. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're gonna tr we're gonna take this for a drive on Monday because today is the LZ Invitational, and and we're stuck. And we're stuck. We might not be a, able. To there's a line of like 200 cars yeah. out yonder. We, we so. might not be able to get back in if we leave. <laughs> but. Yeah. Hey, bud. Hey, Larry. So we couldn't take the E36 out for a drive at the LZ Invitational because we would never be able to get back in. Yeah, it was there's too much really bad traffic there. It so, was insane. Yeah. Uh, and I really want to do a proper drive with this because this is like your vision of what a perfect E36 should be. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. And the cool thing is, is you like, you as in Larry, likes E36s. So I think this is a cool drive for you. I mean, to... so so very early on, um, a good family friend of mine, they were pretty well off and they were able to get uh, a blue four-door E36, like a 97 mm -hmm. for, um, for him as his first car. And like, I, I always liked it because I, and I was always kind of jealous that, wow, what a nice, Car and I always liked the way it looked. Yeah. So for whatever reason, it just kind of got ingrained in me. But also another thing is, it's just the of that era, you know. Yeah. It, in the '90s, when I started getting interested in cars, that's just what was around. That was the top, you know. If you had the money, you would just get an M3. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that was the car I wanted. I mean, when I was 15, that's what I wanted, and my dad was able to get me, you know, that sedan I, I mentioned in another video. The white one, the white sedan M3. Um, but there was a Astoral blue, which is the probably the color yes. that um, you're talking about. Car I used to see every single day when I was in middle school. I used to see the car, and I used to like stare at that car. Yeah, uh, my, our family friend he, he actually um, put TEs on it, like Sweet. gray TEs, so it looked really good. Yeah. So, all this said and done, last night I had a chance to drive our buddy Drew's. Santorini blue yeah, Santorini blue Santorini blue G80 M3 and it's honestly one of the fastest cars I've ever driven on the street legitimately yeah, it is too much dude it, it's a crazy car I don't know why you would launch that thing all wheel drive on the street but man does it move out like it legitimately is a four door R35 GTR it's so fast this is not that but that's the point. This is fun because you can actually floor it and not this get in trouble. This is Analog Capital A, and this is, to me, like one of the best BMW has to offer because this is the S54, full bolt-ons, CSL intake, headers, like proper tune, like in an E36 chassis, which is more analog than E46. And it also has the size of a small, fun car like the 2002 that you saw shop it, this is also lighter weight too yeah. than uh 46 yes. and i feel like for me this is the first like good modern bmw that you could drive every single day with all the luxuries that you would want yeah. um the e30 is a, still a little more of an old school car it is a classic car in my book this it's an era of more plastic yeah. which means it's more of a modern car this is the first modern classic for me. This is the line, E36 is the line. You're right, E30 still feels super old. This is starting to get into where I was driving, you were driving, like that was the era. Yeah, and then like, cause E30, did, didn't it start in 79? Yeah, or? E30, uh, E30 is actually, I think it's 81. It's like 81, okay. 79 so, is a 320, which is the three series. Got it. E21 style. Got it. Yeah. Well, let's get in and drive. Okay. Enough, enough chatting. Right. I wanna, I wanna feel this thing out. It's fast. Is it? And it has no, there's no traction control. Is this faster than your E30? Yes. I'm curious now. My E30 is probably dead even with a stock E46 M3. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a fully bolt-on, fully modded. 46 M3 motor in a lighter weight car. Got it. So, so that your E30 makes what 240 to make, the crank? Yeah, it makes like, uh, to the wheels uh, on the dyno. It makes like 228, I think, is what okay. it, it made. Um, 
Um, this and makes like 340 wheel. This is like whoa. Yeah. Whoa. 340. Yeah. Yo. Oh, okay. The transmission feels nice. Yeah, it's again with the tactile stuff. We chose the steering wheel, a little bit of a deep corn to it, so it's a little bit closer. It says a short shifter, but it's only like 15, 16% shorter than stock. Yeah, it feels nice and tight. Feels good. Love that induction noise. What does this one rev out to? This one, this motor revs out. This is an 8300 redline, uh -huh. but um, I normally take it to about 881 in this Got car because it. it's it's on the edge and with no traction control, it um, it can be a handful. 83? Yeah. Oh, 83. Th this uh, this tack doesn't even go to 83. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's the one thing we're have. We're actually having a whole tack and uh, cluster built at Bavarian Restoration. Oh, with the same exact look with the adjusted RPM. It's That's just cool. Not done yet. It takes a really long time. I like that. I love these builds because the fact that all the gauges work and everything. Yeah. Is yeah. is what is really impressive. Wow. It. You know, you were talking about traction. These uh, these Michelin's actually have a lot of traction quite a bit of traction. Yeah, it's good. It's balanced, part of balance still. Um, but yeah, everything works. I mean, OBC, OBC works. You know, like all of this, all functions, just like it's a standard car. Uh -huh. Gauges work, temperature gauge works, fuel gauge, everything, everything just like stock. I mean, again, I, I, I want to be able to give this to somebody that doesn't know what this is and tell them it's a stock car. Yeah, I, this is a stock BMW. I kind of feel like this is the limit of how much power I would want on the street. Yeah, it, honestly, it, it, I agree. It is for me. Too. I mean, a one, two, three, and it's like, all right, you're there already. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is. But the cool thing about this is that it's in a power. I mean, we've mm -hmm. built a lot of E36s over the years with superchargers and turbos. And we just, you know, I was just taking you through on Adam LZ's motor that we're building, which is a 600 horsepower version of this car, a, a version of this motor rather. And it's just, you get to a point where it's so much that it is it is a lot of work to drive it. Um, and I'm not Adam, um, <laughs> I'm not a pro driver, but I wanna have the, Is it a six speed? It's a five speed. Oh, five speed, got it. So this is the standard transmission that comes in the E36 and three. Ah. The E46s have six speeds, uh, but the gear ratios and stuff in the five speed is really a better street, street type of setup. So we left it in the car. Um, and it got right it. up to the, to the S54. Super easy to drive. Clutch is super easy. Yeah. Is this a stock clutch? It's a Saks Sport clutch. So it's like one notch from stock, but not undrivable like six puck. Craziness. Do these have like some kind of assist? No. No. They have a slave and a master, you know, but yeah. there's nothing crazy. Like... Not like a Porsche. Huh. It's, uh, yeah, it's very easy to drive. Very. Love it. Oh, oh look at that beast. <laughs> I'll see you next time. This is the exact sort of build that I appreciate so much because it is more obtainable than the crazy race car builds and yeah. drag builds and drift builds. Good street car, not too much power, very enjoyable, but also it really shows the craftsmanship that you guys put into it. You know, full color change. Yeah, full color change. Full motor swap. Full interior change with all the little additions that make the car. You know the Alcantara we added, the steering wheel. It's just a total package of exa it's exactly what I would want. And luckily, the customer Grav, we became good friends over the you know year and a half, two years we've been building the car, and he finally he, he saw so many cars that I had and was like, 
just do this the way you would do it, which is the coolest thing that I can, you know, hear. From and customer. just maybe five years ago, even people probably would have thought that you were crazy for spending this kind of money on an E36 M3. For sure. I mean, every day changes that though. I mean, the values of these going up and then everyone wants one. I mean, every time someone comes in, they're like, hey, do you know of any really clean E36s? I'm like, yeah, we can find one. It'd be like 50 grand. Yeah, because uh, at one point it was a $5,000 and under car. Yes. You could get, you could get a really clean one. Mm -hmm. And I think um, our buddy Chelsea Donelfo will, will attest to that. He will... He's gotten so many of them. I think he said he basically like cleaned out the Pacific Northwest of all E36 <laughs> M3s, yeah. like that that were like five, four, three, two thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. But um, now, good luck finding one because they've all been kind of destroyed, and it's not uncommon to spend, you know, five figures, maybe some someday more on For these sure. to get them. For sure, I mean, a lot of people are now bringing them in from Europe with the Euro mo with the Euro motors and stuff like that. But those are, you know, those are the same as a U.S. a really nice U.S. car now. You used to bring them over from Europe and they'd be ten, fifteen thousand more, but now they're right, right on par. You know, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Um, yeah, but I mean, and then you got to find one with a cool color. It's even more. So it's, um, yeah, it's really cool for me because I've always liked the cars. I've always thought that they were special, and now to get the recognition. I think that they deserve is, is a neat thing. Man, this is such a cool build. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about BMWs. You know, I'm learning every single day and being fr uh, friends with you and Drew kind of help a lot. You guys are BMW obsessed. And I didn't really understand the level that you guys understand these cars until I heard you guys talk about them. You know, when, you, when you're talking about them, it's the little nuances that kind of blow me away and I think it's pretty yeah. cool. The details matter and BMW has so many details and it's super important to take those into account when we when we do these builds. You know, I've had the shop for 15 years, but even before that, like BMW was my, you know, that's what I'm partial to and that's been my love forever. And all the guys that work with me, I mean, Adam has, how many BMWs do you own? Like five, seven, seven cars that he <laughs> that he builds. So this is our whole entire life. It's my business, but it's what I love and what I do every single day, pretty much 24 hours a day. Uh, I do this. I sleep sometimes, um, but yeah, it's it's cool. <laughs> you sleep I'm, in the BMWs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and I'm excited to always share it, and it's cool to teach Larry and bring him into the BMW world. So thanks for doing that, Larry. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I love him. Yeah. All right, cool. See you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.